the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, within each, with every breath. We praise you, O oh God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O oh God. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. Holy God, holy and merciful one, holy and compassionate, send upon us your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Refresh us with the power of your Spirit. Confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We'll now sing the gathering song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We're going to make some fun music right now. Some of you remember that post, pre-COVID rather, before all the shutdowns, we have this collection of colored belts. We have a wonderful bell choir, but we gotta have a chance for those who do not play the bells very well, or other play other instruments very well. All you have to do is be willing to be a dingling, and it works just fine. So here's what we do, because it's been a long time since we've done this. We have these colored chords, and if I point at this key and you happen to have a red bell, you ring it. If I point down here, and you happen to have a blue key, key, bell, you ring it. So it's just a matter of following the chords. We're going to make music by the numbers as we go today. Now I'd like to pay a little special attention to some people who are special uh, occasions today. Bev Jertsen is celebrating her 90th birthday this weekend. And I know you're out there someplace, but I can't see, so there we go. There you are. Congratulations, Bev. And we're going to take just a moment to sing happy birthday to you. And let's start on the same note. Num, 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 num. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bev. Happy birthday to you. And it's good to have you here and a very special birthday with family around. We love you here and gl glad to have you in person to worship. We also have a very special occasion with the 40th wedding anniversary of Elliot and Karen Grendel. And there's been a lot going on. So. Absolutely, congratulations there. And the flowers on the altar are for their anniversary. So I'd especially like anyone from the Jertsen family, and bring kids up, that's fine. And if you, Elliot and Karen, come on up. Let's be dinglings this morning. <laughs> and you guys get to sing. <laughs>
Well, that got us going. <laughs> I'm even out of breath just from ringing those bells. <laughs> All right, next we'll, we'll go into our psalm. Our psalm today is 138. I would like the congregation to join me on the bold. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called you, answered, when I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when you have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me, O Lord. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. The second reading is from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Gospel according to Luke, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And then Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend. And you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, don't bother me. The door has already been locked. My children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up, and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then, 
who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Young people, come on up. We've got time for everybody. Anybody else out there? Okay, have a seat. You guys can You can bring grandma and grandpa up too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody that wants to come? So, did you hear in the gospel, what was Jesus doing in our gospel reading today? He was praying. Yep, come on. Yep. And his disciples asked him to teach them to pray. So that's where we get the Lord's Prayer from, right? In, our, in, in the Bible, that comes directly from the Bible. Who teaches you to pray? Pastor Betsy, that's a good one. She does do that every Sunday. Who else teaches us to pray? Your mom. Thank you, mom. Yes, good. Anybody else? The staff at church. Excellent, thank you. Jesus teaches us to pray. Good one. Yep. I think all the people out here, by their example, teach us to pray. We pray together every week, right? And maybe our Bible school teachers and maybe our Sunday school teachers teach us to pray. Now, is there one way to pray? Just only one way, and that's the only way to do it. No. So when you pray at home, what do you do with your hands? You do that? Okay. Does anybody hold hands when they pray? Yeah? Some of you hold hands when you pray at home. Maybe around the dinner table, some people hold hands. Sometimes I've seen some people hold their hands up as they pray. They're opening up their minds and their hearts to hear what um, Jesus has to say in the prayers, right? So we can do that. Do you think, um, have you ever been at school or have you ever been um, somewhere and you needed to say a little prayer, but you didn't want to take the time to hold your hands together and close your eyes because you're walking, right? Can you just pray in your mind throughout your day? Do you have to do all the actions? Is that important? No, we can all just talk to God, talk to Jesus, no matter what we're doing, right? And no one, we don't always know that that is happening, right? You can pray at school, you can pray at the mall, you can pray at the swimming pool, you can pray all throughout your summer, right? So I want you to remember that, that you don't have to be on your knees, you don't have to fold your hands, now all of those things don't have to happen. We do those things Sometimes to center ourselves, to quiet ourselves, so, our, so we're more thinking about what we're doing. But sometimes we can say a quick prayer in our mind, and we don't have to do all those things, right? So can you pray with me? And you can fold your hands, you can hold your hands up, or you can simply just sit quietly, right? Repeat after me, dear Jesus, dear Jesus. we thank you. For teaching, us to pray. for teaching us to pray and for sending people to us, and for sending people to us that, help us to pray. that help us to pray. Lord, we love you, Lord, we love you. and we know you love us. And, we know you love us. and all God's children said, Amen. Thanks for coming up. So I have some papers and maybe a little piece of candy. You can't pray too many times, so we're going to pray again. Oh Lord, 
Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Let each word spoken today be your word of truth. And by that same Holy Spirit, open our hearts to your mercy and grace. Amen. God is personally involved with the details of your everyday life. One of the things I like about summer is that it's an everyday, ordinary kind of time. I don't have to be always planning for the next big, huge event like Christmas or Easter or something like that. It's a time when we go from day to day and watch the beautiful blue sky and clouds when they come. (laughs) And when we watch the crops growing, when we have a little bit of time when our schedules are a bit different. Everyday living is important. So today we want to think a little bit more about the everyday life of a person who shows the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit in their lives. We've been talking all summer about the fruit of the Spirit that comes to every person who is connected to God, to every person who is able to receive the love that God gives, And we've been talking about things like joy and peace. Today's talk is about love and the way we see that through prayer. And all these nine gifts, these nine uh, fruits of the Spirit, become part of our daily life. It's part of what you do in the ordinary times. So focus for one thing, that our infinite God is personally involved in your daily life, right here and now. We come to God in prayer often for big things, for the emergencies, for the things that tear at our hearts. Or sometimes we avoid prayer talking to God because we don't want to hear his answers. But think about the ordinary times. Now, one of the things that I've learned about prayer from scripture readings like this one and from my own prior life is a fact that I want you to go home with today. Nothing is too small to take to God. Absolutely nothing is too small to take to God. And God is not too big to listen to everything that concerns you. Now think about what was going on in the lessons today. The disciples are asking Jesus because Jesus is praying. He's connected to the Father. And they say, how do we do that? How many of you feel comfort, let me see, let me ask it this way. How many of you do not feel comfortable if you're sitting around the table ready to eat and somebody says, why don't you give the grace today and make up a prayer. Anyone not comfortable with that? (laughs) Many people, when especially if I'm there, say, oh, we'll look to the pastor, (laughs) they can pray. But we can pray every day about all the things that are going on in our everyday life. Nothing is too small. Jesus gives his disciples a radically new prayer a prayer that they can follow as a model, a prayer that they can remember and memorize, but a prayer that is also comprehensive that has everything. Now, he talks about three different things in this prayer. He says, give us this day our daily bread. He says, save us from the time of trial. He says, forgive us our debts or our sins. Three different petitions. Now I wonder if any of you, when when we heard this lesson about the Lord's Prayer, did any of you say, what happened to the rest of the prayer? You know, because we've got more that goes through that. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever, you know. All of those kinds of words were added later on by the church by about the third century. This Lord's Prayer is in every language, it is in every true different culture, and it changes with the generations because the words have to mean something to the heart 
and to the mind. So you'll find that sometimes it's that bold, familiar Lord's Prayer version that some of us old people have learned when we were little. And yet, sometimes it is a newer version that speaks to the hearts of the ones that are growing in faith now. We have many ways to pray, but Jesus gives us the model. Now, it's interesting that Jesus uses stories about people in their weakness when he talks about prayer or when he wants to teach us something. We have to be willing to listen. We have to be willing to be involved with what God is about at the moment when we want a two-way prayer. Jesus tells a story about a householder who has an unexpected guest. And at midnight, he goes to his neighbor and says, please open up, I need bread. I have to entertain and feed this traveler that has come to my door. Now, a little bit of a backstory. The homes in Jesus' day were simple. They were often one room, sometimes a flat roof, so you had a balcony kind of thing and a place where you could uh, work out in the sun with uh, kneading bread or whatever you were going to do up on the rooftops. And when it came time for sleeping, the stools and benches were cleared to the side. Out came the sleeping mats all over the floor, and the whole family laid down to sleep in the one room. It's kind of like an overnight camping thing when everybody comes. Now, the householder knocks on the door, and the one who lives in that house is saying, I can't get out. They're my children, they'll wake up. You're disturbing the whole household. Not only that, you're too loud for the neighbors next door. Everybody knows you're in trouble. And the fellow doesn't want to get up. He doesn't want to help. He doesn't want to show that love that they normally have for neighbors. And yet the persistent knocking at the door made the man get up and give him the three loaves. Here's the clincher. Jesus says, if a householder who is making up excuses and doesn't want to do it is merciful and kind and gets up and goes the extra mile anymore, how much more can your heavenly father, who is not too big to handle all the everyday things in life, how much more will God who loves you in every everyday circumstance of your life, how much more will he gladly and generously come to your aid? Now, nothing is too small. I hope you bring all the small things. Someone said, hmm, is it okay if I pray for a parking place? <laughs> I finally found one, and, and, and I was doing a bargain with myself that I would go to the bakery and get the jelly donut if I found a parking place right in front of the, do of the bakery. So I was praying, Lord, if I'm supposed to have the jelly donut, please let me find a parking place. On the fourth try around, I did. <laughs> We have all these little things and it's okay. Be in conversation. Be looking for the answers that God gives. God is personal, God will listen, and he is infinite. Now the other thing I'd like you to remember today is that not only nothing is too small, but nothing is too hard for God. Remember that. Nothing is too hard for God. We get caught up sometimes with our images of God, and sometimes we say, well, I won't bother him with that. I should be able to do that myself. But God is interested in the everyday things that you do. God loves you. God strengthens you with his love. God gives love in generous and profound ways, and he's just waiting for you to participate 
in that glorious, wonderful gift. And God is more than enough to handle any of our needs. Nothing is too small. Nothing is too hard for God. Because our infinite God is personally related to you in everyday things. I'd like to share with you something that's happened recently in my own prayer life. I, like Gina said, there are lots of ways to pray. And most of the time, I have this running conversation going with God. It's about all the kinds of things that are going on. And especially since I'm living alone now, I talk to God in all kinds of surprising ways, and I listen for what he says. Now, the other night, it was a particularly frustrating time for me. I'm usually very sweet. I don't get excited very often. And things, you know, are usually under my control. <laughs> Not this day. Everything seemed to be going wrong. And I kept meeting up with the disabilities that I'm finding in myself. Sometimes I get help up the stairs. Thank you, Gina. <laughs> Thank you for so many of you who have helped me in the little everyday things that have been needed. But this particular day, nothing seemed to be going right. I was trying to get my pills in order, and I dropped the pill container for the middle of the day pills all over the floor. And then I couldn't find the container. It perhaps had gone under the bed or something like that. Not too much space between the bed and the chair. And that was frustrating. And then I couldn't find the pen, the pen, at the chair. I was going to try to take a little time out and cool my mind down and do a crossword puzzle. OK, we'll change gears. Could not find the pen, the pen. And I would have had to go all the way out to the kitchen to find another one. That had fallen on the ground, too, someplace. I moved the chair. I peered under the bed as far as I could. I can't get down on my hands and knees or I'll never get up again. <laughs> I found that a couple days earlier than that, my bed, which is one of those great adjustable things, I can get my head up at night, my feet up at night, it's wonderful. Get one if you don't have one. Anyway, uh, it wouldn't go up and down. So there I am, propping up pillows, because there's nothing I can do to make the bed go up and down. And I changed batteries in the remote control for the bed. Didn't work. So I'm trying to figure out now what to do. So I put it on Tim's list. That's my nephew. And Tim's list is a running list of things that I can't reach, that I can't quite get to, that it would be a two-second thing for him to do and a 20-minute thing for me to do. So there's always a list. And the bed still wasn't working. Everything I turned to was frustrating. It was hurting. I was getting a pity party for the things that I just couldn't do. So here in my impatience, I'm trying to cool down and get myself under control. And all of a sudden, I feel a waft of the Holy Spirit and I look up, and I say, oh, it's lesson time, isn't it, God? Well, here I am. I think you want to teach me something. So I started to listen. First thing I did was put something in God's mouth. You want to teach me about patience, don't you? <laughs> I was guessing. It turned out, however, that it was a message of profound love. God was there, I was there, and we started the conversation with, okay God, it's you and I. That's all there is, just the two of us. Nobody else, nobody else's hands or feet, just us. And then God started to show me what God and I could do together that I couldn't do alone. I started to calm down, started to remember some scripture lessons, started to think, 
And God said to me in some kinds of ways, well, why don't you go get something that you could use as an extender and reach under the bed? See if you can find that crazy pill pile. So I went to where I always keep the back scratcher, because it's long, and short people know how to make unusual things into tools where you can reach something. <laughs> it wasn't there. <laughs> Another frustration. <laughs> of course. So I start thinking, what else could I use? <gasps> Maybe a coat hanger. So I got one of the sturdy coat hangers out, and I bent over and started to whash underneath the bed. Well, guess what? The first thing to come out was the power cord for the adjustable bed. <laughs> I had even forgotten there was one of those. And I washed around a little bit more, and oh, there's the pill box, and I can just reach it. And then I started looking at that power cord. Of course, there are a couple of thank you gods in the middle of all of this. You gotta remember that part too. And I started looking at that power cord, and I'm saying, huh, there are batteries in this power cord. So I started to pull that apart. Nine volts. I only had one nine volt, it took two. But replacing those batteries solved the problem. And my bed went up and down again. And then as I was turning around and saying, thank you, God, for showing me that you and I can do a lot more than I ever thought, I happened to step on my lost pen. God was showing me love. One of the things I marveled at, God has always been an incredible, infinite, powerful spirit of something beyond my imagining, someone accessible but yet more powerful than anything we can know. But I haven't imagined God with hands and feet. That's where you are. You're the hands and feet of God. And we depend upon each other to help each other. And that's where that love of God that comes to us goes. And we reach out to other people in the world and the love increases and it shows us who we are. We belong to him. But all of a sudden, it wasn't just Jesus' arms while he was human here. God himself had the arms to help me reach under the bed. And I crossed a whole lot of things off of Tim's list. And I said, I get it. God and me are enough. Nothing is too small. Nothing is too hard. And I hope you will go out this week thinking your prayers for the ordinary times, for the little things, for the thanksgivings, for the way that God gives you his incredible love because he is right there surrounding you with his arms around you. Just look at the love that God has for you that we can be called the children of God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for your love. Thank you for teaching us and for listening to us and teaching us that we are your children in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us turn now to our next song, um, What Wondrous Love Is This?
I'd like the congregation to please stand for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Rooted and built up in Christ, we pray for the church, emboldened church leaders to take risks for the sake of the gospel and equip the baptized to proclaim their extravagant love for the whole world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in the works of your hands, we pray for the natural world. Make rivers and lakes, oceans, and all waterways sparkle with your radiance. Protect water sources and strengthen those who defend them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Interceding on behalf of the vulnerable, we pray for the peoples of the world. Inspire all rulers and governing authorities with your justice. Guide the work of legislators and public officials that they advocate for the well-being of those they serve. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Persistent in prayer, we pray for our neighbors in need. To all who have hunger, give daily bread. To all who have bread, give hunger for justice. Open us to the cries of those who suffer, those made refugees by war and conflict. We intercede for the people of Ukraine and Yemen and all who have, to, who have to flee their homes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for this congregation. Bless the prayer and fellowship ministries in this place. Call us together in times of praise and blessing, <coughs> trouble and sorrow. In your holy name, merciful God, receive our prayer. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised with him to new life, we give thanks for your saints who rest in your eternal presence. We remember Marv, Thomas, Doris, Rhonda, and others on our hearts. Join our voices with theirs as we, as we sing of your great glory. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Do you want to do the announcements? As the ushers come forward with the uh, with our plates, there are a few announcements for today, and we uh, notice that there will be a service for Marv Lentz on Saturday that will be coming up this week. Uh, there are announcements of uh, others that have, are in the bulletin that need our extra prayer and concern. So we thank you all for your gifts. We will sing, uh, as the ushers bring the plates forward, we'll sing one verse of In My Life, Lord.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we prepare for this gift of Holy Communion, we remember that the bread and the wine are God's gift of body and blood. We are going to move directly from the dialogue to the words of institution. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, he broke it. He gave it to his friends saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As we have this bread and with this wine, we remember the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. The bread and wine are ready for you. Please come and eat.
Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our sending song is one that you better stand up for because we're standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> and anyone who wants to play a musical instrument, come on up kids, come on up. Oh, some of you who are older, we'd love to give those out. For anyone who wants to sing, standing in the need of prayer. Go in peace, serve the Lord. <laughs> 